Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. Given the ongoing shortage of GPUs, I thought this was a good time to look at some of the services on offer like GeForce Now. This is an interesting service for a number of reasons. First of all, it's free to use, it doesn't require any subscription, although you can pay a premium for an enhanced service, and it links directly to game services you probably already own, like Steam or UBI Soft, to allow you to play those games on this system without repurchasing them or being tied to the games within the service itself. So, is GeForce Now our saviour? I want to clarify at this point, this is not a sponsored video, we're not affiliated uh, with NVIDIA or being sponsored or funded to provide this information about the service. I've simply tried it out, as you would as a user, um, using the free service only. I've just been looking at ways to try and get games running on a PC, given the fact that GPUs are so expensive and so hard to come by right now. To test this, I used the system you can see behind me. It's the Intel i5-11500 without a GPU. GeForce Now runs games remotely on a data center, and the result is streamed back to your PC for display. Such services have been plagued by latency in the past, so that was something I wanted to address. Trying it out is as simple as downloading a small application and logging in with an account. It doesn't cost anything, although priority access is $10 a month, and it gets you slightly better hardware at the data center too, including RTX support and enhanced access to servers. There's no need to install games on your PC, so you can even get away with a smaller, cheaper SSD to get up and running. I found the latency noticeable, but not game-breaking by any means. It's not going to be suitable for competitive first-person shooters, but in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Control, I was having a great time and able to play the game without it being distracting. I did my best to measure latency from click to muzzle flash, recording at 240 frames per second and counting the frames. I averaged 42 frames from click to the first evidence of response on screen, which equates to 175 milliseconds total latency. When you consider what's happening here, the click registering, being sent to the data center, the game engine processing it, rendering the scene that results, that scene being compressed and sent back to your PC where it's decompressed and displayed, not to mention the local screen and system latency too, I think that's pretty impressive. If you think it's too much, then I can only suggest you try for yourself and see how you fare. Whether it's a deal breaker for you is likely down to your tolerance of a longer response time. You can adjust settings to achieve the quality you want, but the service is capped to 1080p 60 frames per second. I was able to run the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark on the remote server. It's interesting that it shows that it's 100% CPU bound and running on a ragtag combination of an Intel 8 core CPU and 10 year old computational Tesla T10 GPU, but it may not be an accurate representation of the actual hardware being used. I don't know how the reporting works in a data center. I'd gauge the visual quality and frame rate to be on a par with the GTX 1660 Super, with obviously a little fidelity loss owing to the compression and streaming of the game back to you. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I found a few little glitches in Cyberpunk 2077, but perhaps that's just uh, GeForce Now's commitment to an authentic gaming experience. You do need a robust and unlimited internet connection. I played on a 200 megabit per second fiber connection and found the experience decent overall. Nvidia recommend 15 megabits per second as a minimum and 25 megabits per second as the recommended connection speed. And that should be achievable in most domestic services now. Obviously, a direct Ethernet connection to the router is highly advisable as well, but I have tested it over Wi-Fi 5 and found it to be perfectly acceptable. On the whole, I've been impressed by this experience, and there's a number of factors that make it attractive as an option right now. First of all, you don't need a graphics card at all. As long as your PC is capable of outputting graphics, you can try this service out. Secondly, it's actually free to try. You don't have to subscribe, and you can give it a go and see if it works for you. It doesn't tie you into games that you've uh, purchased within this service, or lock you to using the service to play them. It links to games you already own or can buy within external services. This means you can buy a game on Steam, play it now, and enjoy it running on your own PC when you get a GPU in the future. Whilst I've sometimes had to wait around a minute to join the service at peak times, even with the increased popularity of these services, I've not had excessive wait times. And that's with a free account, not priority access. The fact remains that for around $600, you can buy and build a PC right now that can use this service and get you playing AAA games. You don't even have to download or install the games meaning you can save on hard drive space. As soon as you get a GPU, you can add it and unleash the potential of the PC. Hardcore gamers and first-person shooter enthusiasts aren't going to be satisfied with this as a solution. The latency is simply too high. You're restricted in that case to finding perhaps an older GPU or using integrated graphics to play those kind of games, maybe on simpler settings. I'll investigate some more of those options in future videos. If you're building now, either a Rocket Lake CPU like the i5-11400 or the older i5-10400 is an ideal candidate. Just don't try and do anything demanding using the iGPU. The great thing is, as soon as you find a GPU, you'll have a rock-solid gaming system. The underlying CPU is more than capable. If you're looking to build a high-performance gaming rig, then the i5-10600K or i5-11600K will form the basis of a high-FPS-capable machine as soon as you do obtain a GPU. 
Unfortunately, none of the best Ryzen CPUs include an iGPU, so you can't use them to access this service. But there are the G suffix CPUs like the 3200G, 3400G or the 4650G that could form the basis of an excellent low-cost PC, if you can find them. Because like many other components, they've also been low on stock and overpriced recently, or available only via the grey market. Over on premiumbuilds.com we've got recommendations for a couple of PCs you can build right now to take advantage of this service. I'll link them to you in the description below. If you found this video useful please click like and subscribe, we've got more content coming up to help you beat the GPU shortage.